Slavery has existed throughout human history. From ancient Samaria, to Egypt, to the Roman Empire, and the Muslim Caliphate, slavery was an integral part of society. This more ancient form of slavery was generally not based on race, but was rather a pure power dynamic. The poor, the oppressed, and most importantly, the conquered, made up the bulk of the slave population. The transatlantic slave trade, which began in the 16th century and became entirely dependent upon race, had a profound and lasting impact on the Americas and the world as a whole. Millions of enslaved Africans were forcibly transported to the Americas to work on plantations, in mines, and in households. This forced labor was the cornerstone of the economies of the Americas and greatly contributed to the development of the modern world. The transatlantic slave trade was abolished in the 19th century, but the legacy of slavery continues to leave its stain on the world today. In today's video, we will walk you through the history of slavery from the world's first great civilizations right up to modern day slavery. Before we start, just a quick reminder that if you're interested in early access to videos and live chats with the creator of Intrigued Mind, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Your support will greatly help us keep the channel producing more intriguing content. From prehistoric times to the present, the history of slavery encompasses several cultures, nations, and religions. Evidence of slavery in the earliest civilizations, such as Sumer and Mesopotamia, dates back as far back as 3500 BCE. The Code of Hammurabi is a Babylonian law text written between 1755 and 1750 BCE and is the finest preserved ancient law document found to date. This ancient legal text encompasses a multitude of social laws, including slave-related legislation. These laws include the warranties on the sale of slaves, the purchase of slaves abroad, and the denial of mastership. Punishment for these laws is also stipulated, with clear instructions of how justice should be carried out. The following text is inscribed on a basalt steel that stands over seven feet tall and states, If a slave should declare to his master, You are not my master, he, the master, shall bring charge and proof against him that he is indeed his slave, and his master shall cut off his ear. Certainly a harsh punishment. When one thinks of ancient slaves, ancient Egypt certainly springs to mind. In ancient Egypt, slavery was a common practice and played an important role in Egypt's economy. Slaves were used for labor and agriculture, mining, and construction, as well as serving as soldiers and domestic servants. Slavery in ancient Egypt was not based on race, and enslaved people came from various backgrounds, including prisoners of war, criminals, and debtors. Slaves in ancient Egypt had limited rights and were considered property. They could be punished, beaten, or even killed by their owners. However, some slaves were able to gain their freedom through manumission, which was the act of a slave owner granting a slave their freedom. Despite the harsh conditions, some slaves rose to high positions in society, becoming scribes or administrators. These slaves lived quite comfortably with many of the finer things Egyptian society provided. However, the living conditions of slaves were not always the same, and the status of the slave varied according to the master, with most living in generally poor conditions. One of the most prevalent misconceptions about slaves in ancient Egypt is that the pyramids of Giza were built by slaves. If you want to learn more about this myth, check out Intrigued Minds' video, 10 Historical Facts That Are Not True. Traveling about 1,000 miles across the Mediterranean Sea from Egypt, slavery was widespread in ancient Greece. Yet, there were significant variances across the many city-states. According to several tablets uncovered at Pylos, slavery in ancient Greece originated during the Mycenaean civilization between 1600 and 1100 BC. Even the greatest minds of the time could not think of a world without slavery, since it was such an entrenched institution. Aristotle saw slavery as natural and essential in ancient Greece and viewed slaves as living property. In Athens, a city-state with a democratic government, it was not uncommon for slaves to make friends with their master's children, with some serving as tutors. While in oligarchical Sparta, slaves were subjected to cruel and humiliating living circumstances. There were many sources to supply these slaves to the Greek economy. Some slaves had been born free, but owing to poverty, were sold by their parents into slavery. Other slaves were exchanged for commodities by their own tribes, and large numbers of slaves were seized as war captives by a victorious army. In the 6th and 5th century BCE, it is estimated that Athens had as many as 80,000 slaves, amounting to one in four inhabitants of the city. Across the Ionian Sea, the ancient Roman slave trade was an integral part of the economy and society. Surviving evidence shows that enslaved people had a wide range of occupations. Many carried out hard manual labor under strict supervision but they could also perform more specialized activities with a higher degree of autonomy. Some were highly autonomous and were even responsible for other enslaved people, known as vacari. Roman slavery was also not based on the idea of race, and many slaves in ancient Egypt began as war captives, taken prisoner during the Roman Empire's military campaigns. They were brought back to Rome and sold in slave markets to the highest bidder. However, the majority of slaves were of non-Roman origin and were considered barbarians, which, in a way, allowed race to enter the equation. 
Slaves were a vital source of labor and wealth for Rome, but also contributed to the decline of the Roman economy and society as the slave population grew and the non-slave population decreased, leading to a decline in civic engagement and an increase in wealth disparity. At its peak, it is estimated that slaves made up to 20% of the entire Roman population and even higher in areas such as Italy. However, by far the most well-known and documented instance of a slave economy is that based on the transatlantic slave trade. From the 16th through the 19th centuries, between 10 and 12 million Africans were transported in horrific conditions across the Atlantic Ocean to the Americas as part of the transatlantic slave trade. It was the second of three phases of the so-called triangular trade in which Europe sent weaponry, textiles, and wine to Africa. Africa sent enslaved people to the Americas, and the Americans sent sugar, coffee, and other raw materials to Europe. An often overlooked fact is that during this period, African states and African people played a significant part in the slave trade, and that slavery was widespread among the sub-Saharan tribes before the arrival of European slave traders. However, the introduction of the transatlantic slave trade brought the institution of slavery to a far more terrible place. Due to a fear of disease and violent African opposition, Europeans seldom ventured into the interior of Africa, so slaves would be transported to coastal outposts where they were exchanged for merchandise by African slave traders. In the 1480s, Portuguese ships were already carrying Africans for use as slave labor on sugar plantations on the islands of Cape Verde and Madeira in the eastern Atlantic. After 1502, Spanish conquistadors sent enslaved Africans to the Caribbean, but Portuguese merchants dominated the transatlantic slave trade for nearly 150 years, operating from the Congo-Angola region along the west coast of Africa. During parts of the 1600s, the Dutch dominated the trade, and in the following century, English and French merchants controlled roughly half of the transatlantic slave trade, acquiring a large percentage of their human cargo from West Africa between the Senegal and Niger rivers. An agreement between Spain and Britain in 1713 guaranteed the British a monopoly on the commerce of slaves in Spanish territories. Under the terms of the Asiento de Negros, Britain was authorized to provide Spanish colonies with 4,800 enslaved Africans every year for 30 years. The South Sea Company was awarded this contract, with the British Queen Anne owning approximately 22.5% of the company's shares. With the expansion of sugar plantations in the Caribbean and tobacco and later cotton plantations in North America, the demand for slave labor increased dramatically throughout the 17th century. Historians believe that roughly three-fifths of the total volume of the transatlantic slave trade occurred during the 18th century. The Middle Passage, or passage over the Atlantic Ocean, was known for its overcrowded and unsanitary conditions aboard slave ships, where hundreds of slaves were crammed tightly into tiers below deck for a 5,000-mile journey that generally lasted for over 80 days. They were usually chained together in quarters that made it impossible for them to sit upright, with oppressive heat and oxygen levels that dropped so low that candles couldn't be lit. Historians believe that between 15 to 25 percent of enslaved Africans died en route to the Americas aboard the slave ships. Even during the Enlightenment, a European intellectual movement in the 17th and 18th centuries that brought together ideas about God, reason, nature, and humanity into a worldview and led to revolutionary changes in art, philosophy, politics, and freedom many people didn't want slavery to end. While it was generally abolished within Europe itself, European nations continued to employ it extensively in their colonies or participate in the slave trade itself. One major reason was the economic benefit that slavery provided to slaveholding societies. Slave labor was crucial to the economies of many countries, particularly in the Americas, where slaves were used to grow cash crops like sugar, tobacco, and cotton. Another reason that slavery persisted was the belief in the inherent racial superiority of white people over people of African descent. This belief was used to justify the enslavement of Africans and to maintain a system of racial hierarchy. The Enlightenment ideals of equality, freedom, and human rights were often not extended to slaves, who were considered property rather than human beings. However, one by one, the major slave-trading nations began to abolish slavery. From 1833 to 1886, abolition laws came into effect in these nations due to a shift in the public's perspective on liberty. The abolition of slavery was a complex process that required the political will and economic resources of governments and society as a whole. The process of abolition required the dismantling of a system that had been in place for centuries and was deeply ingrained in the economic and social fabric of many societies. It was also often met with fierce resistance from those who benefited from the labor and exploitation of enslaved people. The American Civil War, which lasted from 1861 to 1865, was mostly fought over the issue of slavery. The southern states wanted to keep slavery, while the northern states saw it as a moral and economic evil. During the war, President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which proclaimed all slaves in Confederate territory free. 
However, it wasn't until after an estimated 620,000 casualties and a northern quote-unquote victory that slavery ceased to exist in the United States of America. In 1865, the 13th Amendment to the Constitution was enacted, which officially ended slavery in the United States. However, modern slavery has reappeared in the form of forced labor, debt servitude, and human trafficking, despite the abolition of historical slavery. It affects millions of people worldwide and may take many forms, including workers in supply chains of multinational organizations, fishing trawlers, agricultural areas, mining, and in domestic and sexual slavery. Modern slavery can be found in many countries around the world, both developed and developing. According to the Global Slavery Index, some of the countries with the highest estimated instances of modern slavery include North Korea, Eritrea, Burundi, the Central African Republic, and Afghanistan. Slavery still exists and it is our responsibility to educate ourselves and abolish it forever. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel. Like the video and leave your suggestions in the comments below.